Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to reveal column content on Hover with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. Now we're going to need to give our page a name. So I'm going to just call this Reveal Column Content and then click on Use Divi Builder. So with this design, you can build this on a pre-made layout or even build it from scratch. But for this, I'm going to build this from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then we're going to need three equal columns. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then we're going to close this. Next, we're going to come over here to this section. So we need to add some padding. So I'm going to click here on section settings, click on design, and then I'm going to come over here to spacing. So this is where we need to add our padding. And for the top, it's going to be 10 VW. For the bottom, it's going to be 15 VW. And then we're going to save. Now, the next thing we need to do, we need to uh, adjust the size of our row. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon to enter my row settings, click on design. And then we're going to come over here to sizing. So the first thing we're going to do is to make this row full width. So we want this to cover the whole width of our page. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Next, we're going to come over here to gutter width. Now, the gutter width is the space between the columns. So what we need to do is to remove the space completely. So I'm going to drag this slider all the way down to one. I know right now we can't see this happening on the screen. That's because we don't have anything in those columns. So let's go ahead now and save. So the next thing we're going to do now is to add a text module. So I'm going to go ahead now and click this plus button to add my module. And then I'm going to search for it. And then I'm going to select it. So here we just need a title. So I'm just going to get rid of all this text. And our title here needs to be assigned to heading three. So I'm going to come over here, set this to heading three, and then we're going to come over here to design. So what we need to do now is to go into the heading three text and add some stylizations. So I'm going to start off here with uh, clicking this uh, tab for heading three. We're going to add our font. And our font here is going to be Didact Gothic. Gothic. So all you have to do if you don't have it on this uh, drop down, you just need to search for it. It's a Google font and it's free. So I'm going to select that. We're going to make it bold. And uh, the next thing we need to do is to align this to the center. And let's give this text a text color. So uh, if you want to follow along and use the exact same settings as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So I'm going to go ahead now and click this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. But of course, you can use any color that you want uh, throughout this design. Right, so the next thing here is to add my heading 3 text size. So currently, it's on 22 pixels, but I need to set it to 1.2 VW. And then while we're here, we might as well enter our mobile devices. So size for our mobile devices. So I'm going to click here on this uh, little icon, click on tablet. And for our tablet and phone, we're going to set this to 20 pixels. Now, this step is very important because it allows you to have a balanced design throughout all devices. Okay, so now that I've entered all my um, settings, I'm gonna come back over here to desktop. And for now, I'm gonna go ahead and save. So what we need to do next is to go back to our rows, our row settings, because we need to add our paddings and uh, margins. So I'm gonna click again on this gear icon, design, spacing. So what I wanna start off with is by adding my left and right padding. So I'm gonna come over here, and my left and right padding is going to be 8VW. But notice, I'm going to use this, uh, this chain tool. And this will apply my value both to the left and the right. Okay, so next, we need to add column 1, right padding of 2VW. So I'm going to add it here. And then next, we need to add column 2, left padding of 1VW. And then we need to go to column 2, right padding. And this needs to be 1VW as well. And then column 3, left padding needs to be 2VW. Okay, so... We've just manually added our spacing between all our columns. So now that that's all done, I'm going to go ahead now and save. And then we need to add a text module right below our title here. So I'm going to go ahead and click this plus button, search for my text, select my text module. And now my text has been entered. Now this is where, I mean, right now I'm using this dummy text, but in your case, you need to use your own text uh, for your own website. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and save. And then we need to go into our heading text. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design, spacing. And over here, we also need to add our margins and our padding. So we're going to start here with the bottom padding of 4VW. And then I'm going to come over here. And you can see here that this looks much better now that we have space between these two modules. Okay, so I'm going to add my padding here. So my top and bottom padding is going to be 4VW. 
And then again, I'm gonna activate my chain so that my value is added both to the top and the bottom. Right, so the next thing I wanna do is to come over here to my box shadow, and then I'm gonna select my style. And uh, for my vertical position, I'm gonna set this to 36. And then for my blur strength, I'm gonna set this to 60 pixels. And then over here on the color, I'm just gonna click on this eyedropper tool, and uh, I'm just gonna change this three into a six. So that's gonna make the color a bit lighter. So I'm just gonna make sure that I've added it correctly. And as you can see here, I done it wrong. So I'm gonna paste it between the brackets and then we need to go ahead and save. Now let's go into this uh, text module as well. I'm gonna click on this gear icon. So let's go ahead and make some uh, text settings. I'm gonna come over here to design text and we're gonna start off by setting this text to open sans. So I'm gonna search for Open Sans. It's a Google font as well. I'm gonna select it. Now for the text size, I'm gonna set this to 0.8 VW. And while I'm here, I might as well set my sizes for my mobile devices. So I'm gonna click on this little icon, click on tablet. And for my tablet, I'm gonna set this to 14. And this is also going to be the same for the phone. And make sure you set it to pixels. Okay, so that looks much better now. And then I'm just gonna go back to my desktop. Next, I'm gonna come over here to letter spacing and I'm also gonna add this as minus 0.05 VW. And then for my line height, I'm gonna set this to 2.2 EM. Right, so uh, the next thing we need to do is to justify our text. So I'm gonna come over here and click this last tab. So as you can see now, it's, it's justified. And our text color, if it's not set to dark, make sure it's set to dark so that we can read it on this white background. Now let's head over to our spacing settings. So I'm gonna click here on spacing. And the first thing we're gonna do is to add a bottom margin of three VW. Next, we're gonna add a top and bottom padding of two VW. So I'm gonna add it here and then I'm gonna activate my chain so that my value is added both to the top and the bottom. And then finally, we're going to add four VW to the left and the right, like that. Now it's time to add our border. So I'm gonna come over here to border and we're gonna make sure that the uh, border width is one pixel because as you can see right now, nothing is showing because our border here is set to zero. So let's set it to one, right? So now we can see we have a border. And then the next thing we need to do now is to add our color because um, right now what we have is a bit too dark. Okay, so that's much better. It's very subtle, but it works with our design. So pretty much that's all we need to do right now. I'm gonna go ahead now and save. Now, the next thing we're gonna add here is the button. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and uh, I'm gonna select my button module. So the first thing we need to do here is to align our button to the center so that our design is balanced. So I'm gonna come over here to design alignment and then I'm gonna center it. So now we need to customize our button and to do that, we need to come over here to button and then activate use custom styles for button. So I'm gonna say yes to that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is set my size. So right now it's at a 20, but I want this at one VW. And then while I'm here, I might as well add my sizes for my tablet and my phone. So I'm gonna click here on the tablet tab. I'm gonna set this to 15 pixels and I'm gonna do that the same to the phone. Okay, and back over here to my desktop tab. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is to set our color to black. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. Now we need to add a border for our button. So I'm just gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna set my color by clicking this eyedropper tool, pasting my color like this. And as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so now that I have this, uh, we need to just remove our border radius here because it comes at uh, three pixels by default. So I'm gonna set that to zero. So here on the font, I'm gonna make sure my font weight is set to bold. And I'm also going to change the style to uppercase. And for the letter spacing, I'm gonna add 0.05 VW. All right, so the next stage now is to go to the spacing. So I'm gonna scroll down, click on spacing. So this is where we need to play around with the margins and the padding. So I'm gonna start with the padding. So I'm gonna add 0.8 VW and this needs to be both to the top and the bottom. And for left and right, we're gonna set this to 3.5 VW. And we've just made our button slightly bigger. Now we also need to add our sizes for our tablet. So I'm gonna come over here, click this little icon here, click on tablet. 
So here on tablet, uh, it needs to be set to 10 pixels for the top and bottom. Activate my chain. And then left and right needs to be set to 50 pixels. Okay, and that needs to be the same for the phone as well. So as you can see in this view, the button looks great. So now I'm just going to go back to my desktop. And then we're going to go ahead and save. Okay, so now we've uh, designed the three elements that we need. So the next thing we need to do now, instead of redesigning all these steps, and um, I mean, for the, th for the second and the third column, uh, there's an easy way you can do this. You can just hold down the command key. If you're on a PC, it's the control key. So we want to do what is known as multi-select. So you need to go ahead now and click on the modules that you need to clone. So now that I have all three of them selected, I can just then hit command C to copy. That's the shortcut for copying. If you're on a PC, it's control C. And then you want to come over here and hit command, command V or control V if you're on a PC. So that's the copy and paste keyboard shortcut. Okay, so you can see that was really fast. I was able to add all these really, really quick. So now to just uh, to make these different, all you have to do is to go in and change the colors. And you can also change you know, the contents of this information. So what we're going to do now is just to change the color of that heading. So I'm going to select heading three, and then I'm going to click here on my color and just replace this old color with my new one. Okay, move on to the next one. We're going to do the same. We're just going to come over here, click on this gear icon, design. Make sure you choose heading three, otherwise it won't work. And then I'm going to paste it here like that. So now we have three distinct colors just to differentiate my columns. All right, so now that we've added all the column content that we need, we need to add an overlapping element that will hide the content before hovering. And to achieve this, we need to uh, come over here to the first column and we need to click this plus button and add a text module and make sure the text module that we're adding is below the button. Okay, so I'm going to select it and then I'm just going to add some dummy text in here. But in your case, you want to add some text that you that works for your website. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to add a gradient background. So I'm going to click here on background, click on the second tab and click this plus button. So let's start off by adding our first color. So I'm just going to paste it in here. Click on the second color. And these colors, by the way, uh, just for this tutorial, but in your case, you can add your colors that match with your branding. Okay, so those are my uh, two colors there. Now we're going to go to our text settings. And uh, what we're going to do here is to set our, our font. So we are going to change this from the default to Didact Gothic. We're going to make sure our text color is set to white because right now we can't read it on a, on a dark background. So now, that now, now, as I've selected white, you can now read this text. Next, for our text size, we're going to set this to 2VW. It's nice and big. And for the text orientation, it needs to be set to centered. So I'm just going to scroll down and make sure that this is centered. So now, as you can see, we don't have enough breathing space around our text. So let's head over here to spacing. So what we're going to do here is to start with a top margin of minus 38VW. And then we're going to add a top and bottom margin of 15VW. Okay, so now we can see that it's covering our content that we have here. Next, we're going to add some rounded corners to this. So we're going to come over here to border. And we're going to set our rounded corners to 10 pixels. And um, if you apply it with the chain activated, this is going to be applied to all sides of the rectangle. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is to add a box shadow. So I'm going to come over here, choose my box shadow. And for my blur strength, I'm going to set it to 40 pixels. And then for my shadow color, I'm just going to click on this eyedropper tool and paste my value between the brackets. And as you can see, it's very, very subtle. Now we need to go to the filters. So the first thing we need to make sure is uh, set here is the opacity and it needs to be set to 100%. So now we need to add our hover state. So to do that, we're going to click here on this little arrow and then click on hover. So now if we set our opacity all the way down to zero, now we can see that our hover state will now reveal this content on hover. Okay, really cool. Now we just need to make sure that our text module remains on top of all column content. And to do, to do that, we need to add this bit of CSS code. So I'm going to come over here to advanced. 
click on custom CSS and add this code onto the main element. Now this CSS code as well can be found in the post which I'll link to in the show notes below. So now that will ensure that uh, this will always be above our content. So that's all we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead now and save. So the next thing we need to do now, since we've designed this and it has all the content that we need, is to clone it and add it to the remaining two columns. So again, I'm gonna hold on my command key. I'm gonna select it. I'm gonna copy it. Paste it like that. So finally, all you have to do now is to go in and change your colors for the gradient. So over here, I'm gonna start with my first color. So it's always good that um, we have different colors as a design element here. But of course, these colors need to work with the colors with the colors of your branding. Okay, so I'm gonna add my second color here. I'm gonna save that, do the same over here. Click on this gear icon, background. Add my first color. Add my second color. Now over here on the gradient direction, you can also set this and play around with it. So for this, let's say you add it to you add 124 degrees. You can see now that uh, it's slightly different, but you can play around with this and um, go with what you prefer. So pretty much that's all what that's all we need to do. So now I'm going to go ahead and save this. And to see our final design, we need to save this page and exit the Visual Builder. So my page is saved, I'm gonna exit the Visual Builder, and now we're gonna test and see if this is working. So as you can see, as I hover over this, now it's revealing the content under it. So there you have it, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.